It's that time of the year that I love the most, where the air is crisp and the leaves start changing color, and I feel like turning on my oven. That's why a trip to a local farm stand and then rummaging through my freezer gave me the idea to make bacon-wrapped chicken with acorn squash salad. Believe me, the combination is near perfect. When you roast the acorn squash, it becomes sweet. Paired with the savory and comforting bacon-wrapped chicken and a crisp salad, I mean, seriously, you have to try it. Let's go to the kitchen, I'll show you how to do it. We're gonna work on the acorn squash salad first because the roasting is what takes the longest to do. For the acorn squash salad, you're gonna need, of course, an acorn squash, romaine lettuce, red bell pepper, Dijon mustard, white wine vinegar, and olive oil. I love when fall produce starts to come out like all of the pumpkins and all of the different kinds of squash. But for some reason, whenever I would see acorn squash at the grocery store, I would just walk right past them and avoid them. Kind of like an old ex-boyfriend. I don't know why. I think it's because somewhat, somehow I thought that acorn squash would be intimidating to cook, but it's actually not. As long as you scrub the skin well, and you roast it in the oven, the skin actually becomes soft enough to eat. Isn't that cool? There you go. So you use a rocking motion with your knife, and it does take a little bit of arm muscle, but not too much because seriously, I have no arm muscle. So if I can do it, you can do it. Oven is preheated to 450 degrees. There, they're all done. And now we're gonna put it on this parchment paper lined tray. Oops, it's a tight squeeze. And you're gonna drizzle everything with about a tablespoon of olive oil. You don't have to go to crazy town with this because because of the parchment paper, it'll roast up nicely on its own without sticking. And then season with salt and pepper. Sprinkle high and evenly over everything. And then with clean hands, you're gonna give them a little rubbing and a little loving before they hit the oven. This is just to make sure that the seasoning and the oil is on both sides and distributed evenly. Okay, that's done. So what I like to do before I pop them into the oven is kind of make sure that they're all facing the same way because that way, when you turn them midway through the cooking time, you'll, you won't get confused about which slices you already turned and you didn't. That's just my little trick because I tend to forget. Okay, I'm gonna wash up my little oil hands and put them in the oven. I just set my timer to 30 minutes and the squash went into a 450 degree oven we're just gonna flip it once halfway through and leave it alone. Right now, the air is a little bit chilly, but not too, too cold. So, you know, even though you want something comforting, you don't want something like super heavy right now, right? So I thought a nice crisp salad would go well with our acorn squash. I mean, because you can use any, you can use any lettuce you want, but I'm just using two hearts of romaine because this is something I tend to have in my fridge, usually just for whatever. And actually I think it, it pairs really well because the acorn squash gets soft and sweet and then you need something a little bit crunchy and hearty for the vinaigrette. And I'm going to wash my lettuce 
after I cut it because I just find that it's easier to do that. And here's the thing, invest in a salad spinner because honestly, this is the key to making a really good salad, making sure your leaves are really dry. I'm using a red bell pepper, but you can use whatever you want, whatever has a nice color and crunch. So you could use carrots, but I think that the orange and the red together on the salad looks like a nice fall leaf salad, if that makes sense. I'm just gonna put all of this stuff aside and gonna go wash the lettuce. We're gonna make a vinaigrette to go on top of our salad. Oh, and so we're gonna start off with two tablespoons of white wine vinegar. If you don't have white wine vinegar, use anything you want, even lemon juice. The point is you just want something a little bit sharp and acidic. And I think white wine vinegar works well for this. Next, we're gonna use two teaspoons of Dijon mustard. And this is one of those things that I always have in my pantry. Ooh, squirts. Got it all over myself. And the Dijon mustard is important because it acts as an emulsifier for the olive oil. I'm gonna measure it out to a quarter cup. The dressing is gonna be a little bit on the tart or acidic side, but that's intentional because the acorn squash is sweet and the bacon is a little bit savory and hearty. So you want something to balance that out. So something tart and sharp, like this vinaigrette will do the trick. And a little goes a long way. But if you find that you don't have enough dressing and you want more, just make some more. And then last thing you're gonna do is season it with some salt and pepper. Don't forget this step because greens can take up a good amount of salt. It's where all the flavor's at. There you have it, creamy and dreamy. To go along with our acorn squash salad, we're gonna make bacon wrapped chicken. And for that, all you need is bacon and chicken tenderloins. This is something that I tend to always have in my freezer because they're kind of like my emergency items. You can just always use them for whatever you need. So I have it on hand. And all you do is take it out of the freezer and put it in your fridge and let it thaw overnight and it's ready to go. The cool thing about chicken tenders is that they stay really juicy and succulent pretty much no matter how you cook them. And if you don't like the little tendon pieces here, like I don't, and I'm kind of a stickler when it comes to this, because I don't like people chewing into it, I just cut it off. And my recipe calls for eight chicken tenders, but really, I mean, cook as many as you want or as many as the package contains. I would say that two tenders per person is a good portion. So you just need to aim for that. It's pretty hearty. Okay, so all you have to do is grab one piece of bacon and grab one tender and just wrap the bacon around the tender. That's it. Super simple. You don't even have to season it with salt and pepper in advance because the bacon already has enough flavor in it that it will be seasoned enough. And I think that's the coolest part about this. So bacon actually got me a job. I used to work at Whole Foods as a demonstration chef and I had to make a recipe using Whole Foods ingredients in front of a panel of judges and people who were interviewing me. And all I did was wrap some bacon around shrimp and drizzle it with balsamic glaze. And needless to say, I got the job. I mean, really, what's better than bacon wrapped anything? Now all I'm gonna do is de-chicken. We're just gonna put the pan on medium heat. You don't want it to be too blurringly hot because you wanna give the chance, the bacon a chance to render its fat 
And of course, because there's enough fat in the bacon, you don't need to add much to the pan. But I'm just gonna add a drizzle or so just to kind of help it going, get it going. And I'm gonna work in two batches because you don't wanna overcrowd your pan. And actually, because I'm not gonna eat this right now, I'm gonna serve it to my family later, I'm only gonna make four right now because I don't wanna have overcooked chicken by the time they eat it. And then, as long as it's on medium heat, medium to medium high heat, trust me, all you have to do is just leave it alone for about six minutes and go do something important with your life. It's been six minutes exactly. And so now look, come closer my friends. Oh yeah, look at that. I mean, look how beautifully golden and crisp that looks. And it comes right off the pan without hardly any effort. See that? Now all you do is wait for another four minutes or so. That should be good because it cooks faster on the second side. And then you're ready to go. All right. We're done with this batch, and that's all I'm gonna make for now. So just take it onto a paper towel lined plate to drain it because you know when you cook your bacon in the morning, you wanna drain it on paper towels to stop with that extra grease. And just cover with aluminum foil and get your salad assembled. You know, I just realized that this would be perfect to make for Halloween because look at the colors, they're like, they're like orange and black. Perfect. So we're just gonna assemble on a platter. So the chicken's the last thing that you do and everything else is ready. If you don't wanna put it all on a platter and serve it family style, you can always just opt to put it on individual plates and assemble each plate individually. The next thing I want to do is just grab the red bell peppers and kind of strew and scatter them everywhere. I mean, already the colors look so gorgeous and vibrant. And then you grab your cooled acorn squash. Right now they're super cooled, and so they're not going to wilt the lettuce, so you don't have to worry about that. I think it's pretty personally if you just put it all around in a concentric circle, but really there are no rules. Lastly, you're going to get your chicken and it's been sitting here in a warm aluminum foil blanket. So they're not piping hot, and, but they're still just a little warm and super juicy. And what I like to do is just kind of place them on the top. Gorgeous. And remember that dressing, it stayed together. See, no need to re-whisk it. And here's the thing. If you wanted to, you could have just dressed the whole salad before you put your acorn squash down but with the dressing just drizzling it all over. But, you know, I like to not put dressing on salads until the very last minute when I'm going to serve it. So right now I'm just going to steal a little piece and I'll just drizzle the salad dressing on my own. Take a piece here, a little dressing. Okay. Now we're gonna go in for the money shot. Bacon and chicken. Oh, it's so juicy. Mm. That is so hearty and satisfying. The squash is just fork tender, even the skin. with the bright tart vinaigrette and the super soft and sweet squash. Everything is so balanced, not to mention really colorful. It's perfect for fall. Okay. Before I eat this entire plate, I probably will. Let's talk about some substitutions. In case you don't have an acorn squash or you don't want to use it, feel free to use a kabocha or a butternut squash. But for a butternut squash, remember to peel it because the skin won't get as tender. And if you don't like squash at all, or you don't have it, then just use potatoes. Potatoes, sweet potatoes, whatever you want. And then also, if you don't have chicken tenders, 
Just use chicken breasts and cut them up into smaller pieces, wrap them up in bacon, and that's it. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video. And if you liked it, remember to thumb it up, leave a comment below, and subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you try it. I'll see you next time. Mm. No, seriously, I'm gonna eat this whole thing. Someone better stop me. Actually, you don't have to stop me, it's just so good.